according to your name. Worship him, give him a shout. Bible says a shout of joy and victory shall not depart from the tents of the righteous. Leba baru kapasi katarianda balakabaya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's excited to be in God's presence. It's really exciting. In His presence, the Bible says there is fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Walk up to three people and tell them it's good to see you again. Make sure you are smiling. Greet your enemies. Greet your friends. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to see wonderful faces. We are the victorious ones. Hallelujah. We are the victorious ones. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, every time we come before God, I need you to know that we're not just doing a ceremony that makes us excited are you following me now we're not just doing church and getting excited the bible says now the lord is that spirit it says and where the spirit of the lord is there is emancipation there is liberty for you are bigger than what we say, say. say. you are bigger than what we say Hey, you are bigger than what I say. Say, say, you are bigger than what we say. Say, say, you are bigger than what I say. Say, Hallelujah. Father, we thank you once again for this privilege and this opportunity to worship in your presence. Thank you for your word, your ability to build up our spirits. Thank you because your word does not fail. Lord, we thank you for the confidence that we have in your word. Just hold the hands of your neighbor and begin to pray in the spirit. Can you? Hold the hands of your neighbor. Pray in the spirit. Zeka prada gada balada ba kumbra se prada kate balada ba. Rata kata prada gade balada ba uska. Edify your spirit, man. This is how we are built in His presence. Leba kapande kate prada gade balada ba kura sakabai. Ma posa si kapariye katai. Manda prande kavos kapariya dai. Melt in every mountain of unbelief. Setting our gaze on the ability of the spirit, looking beyond the flesh and the limitations that come with this system, looking up and above and unto he that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask. Let faith rise in your spirit. We pray because we are the victorious ones, empowered by the energy of the spirit. There is a working of the spirit in us that causes us to look beyond the unseen. In the name of Jesus, we have the ability. We are not ordinary. God lives inside of us. We're in partnership with the Holy Ghost, advancing the frontiers of the kingdom of our Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, pray in the Spirit. This is part of the meeting. You are being built. 
you are energized. There is a working of the spirit that melts every sickness, that melts every oppression of Satan. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the anointed of the Lord say so. Let the blessed of the Lord say so. Let the victorious of the Lord say so. Let the generals of the Lord say so. Rapaka proseketa, membraba se prosa sibarai, rapaski bada. In Him we live, in Him we move, in Him we have our being. Generate energy in the spirits. Leka bada na bakose prengele belere bosh, rapaka proso sotepa. But ye belong, building up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue and defies himself, builds up himself in the name of Jesus. We set our gaze on Jesus. We set our perception beyond the limitations of this world. The ability of the Spirit is at work in us. We refuse to be limited. We are a strong family. We are unlimited by the power of the Spirit. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard. It has not come into the heart of any man that which God has revealed unto us. Make sure you are praying. This is part of the service. It's a season of great grace and glory. Great grace. Great favor. Great enablement to do beyond our capacity. To stretch beyond boundaries. Break forth from the north, the east, the south, the west. There is grace for enlargement. We are strong like Mount Zion. We cannot be shaken. Fix our gaze on Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith. I am victorious. Hallelujah. 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 In one minute before we sit down, I'd like you to prophesy to yourself and say, I'm victorious in this life. I'm victorious. Come on, prophesy. Come on, pray. Speak it. Above sickness, I am victorious on account of what Jesus has done upon the cross. Oh, I am victorious in this life. I look beyond every limitation. I am above. Come on, pray. This is the season where there must be a performance, a manifestation of the word of God, a manifestation of the ability of the spirit in you. I am above. Above this system. Above this realm. I refuse to be limited by the power of the Holy Ghost. I refuse death. I refuse sickness. I refuse poverty. I refuse the world, the flesh. I am above by the Spirit. Yes, I'm above. Let faith rise. Koinonia, the place of intimacy, the place of prophecy. Prophesy, saints of God, God will not fail you. I know my God is alive. I know my God is alive. 
over your life is alive, energizing you to be relevant in the kingdom. For Savior shall come out of Zion, and they shall trust the mount of Esau. By fulfilling prophecy, fulfilling Obadiah, Saviors shall arise from every tribe and every tongue, every continent, every nation. Saviors shall arise. Prophesy, I arise. The great light arising, breaking free from every limitation. in your spirit. This is the victory that overcomes. This is the victory that overcomes. Even our faith on the path of the just is as a shining light. Shines brighter. In spite of every limitation, shines brighter. Shines brighter. Hallelujah. Listen, friends, I need you to understand that we have a vision in this place. The vision is not just to celebrate people inside and outside. The vision is not just to show the excellence of the kingdom. I need you to realize that we have a vision. And that vision is to bring everyone into a place of intimacy where you know the Holy Spirit. Where you understand his voice. And to bring you to a point where you are equipped with the knowledge of the kingdom. The Bible says he gave unto some, he gave apostles and prophets and teachers, pastors and evangelists for the equipping of the saints that they, the saints, will do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. And so, it's not just for us to jump and shout. You are supposed to become something under this atmosphere. And if after a period of time you do not become it, we have failed. Are you listening to me? It's our goal that everyone understands the system of the kingdom. That's why for us here, your spiritual advancement is not when you become a pastor. That's not the proof that you are growing. It's how much you are growing in intimacy with the Holy Spirit. And you are equipped with the ways of God, the principles of the kingdom. I've always said it here, the Bible says he made two great lights. One to rule in the day and the other to rule in the night. And the Bible says the entrance of thy word giveth light. That light to rule in the day. As the word of God comes, it comes to equip you. So that you will rule and reign. And legislate on behalf of heaven. He said thy kingdom come. Let your governing influence find expression in this fair. And we are these saviors that God is training and raising. We are on a mission. I need you to understand. The mission is bigger than E and I. The mission is bigger than koinonia. The mission is the kingdom of our father. Hallelujah. And so every time you come, I like you to be sensitive. If all you want to come and do is just come and see friends and hear the next rema and see the manifestation of the spirit, as good as that is, we will seem to be successful by the ratings of the world. That's the rubbish that goes on. 
we rate success in ministry by parameters that are unknown in the realm of the spirit but we are in a time and a season where the quality of men you see let me tell you something leaders do not maintain followers they raise leaders and champions out of people leadership is not about maintaining followers our pride is not that we become gods in this place and have people come pray for me our pride is to see that the least of us become as great as david the glory of the lord is risen upon me the glory of the lord is risen upon me prophesy the glory is the season the glory of the lord is risen See the glory of the Lord. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I see the favor of the Lord. I see the favor of the Lord is risen upon me. I see the knowledge of the Lord. The knowledge of the Lord is risen upon me. So I arise and shine. And the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Oh, I rise and shine, I shine the light of the And the glory of the Lord, the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Hallelujah. Breathe upon us tonight, O oh God. Lord, we are tired of religion. I pray that this will not just become a ceremony. Let every flesh be crucified. And let Christ alone be lifted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Once again, it's good to see everyone. Wonderful faces. Hallelujah. Before I begin ministering tonight, I'd like to invite one good friend. He has not told us Happy New Year. Marzi Prosper, appreciate him, please. He's coming up to tell the whole house Happy New Year. Great to see you. Amen. You know, they always talk about um, the shoe. John the Baptist said, Jesus Christ sandals he cannot untie. The shoe is putting me inside, I cannot walk with it. I have to drop it here also. I have to say a very big thank you and um, happy new year to all my house and my friends, my well wishers, my fellowship members. You know, that's one thing I love about him. Anytime I come into Zaria, I have a wedding tomorrow. So I told him I'm coming to fellowship with us. He said, you have to be here. And I want to thank God for all the co-ministers when I saw them on their suit. It reminded me of the suit I'm going to wear tomorrow. <laughs> That's why I didn't wear my own today. So I'm blessed by your suit. I'm encouraged. In future, I'm going to be wearing this one. <laughs> yeah, before I go, I want to say this. Um, this is um, our resumption time, you know time of resumption anytime I remember my days in school it used to be funny you know when you resume from school resume back to school your pocket is full I will advise you so you sit in church and carefully invest into your stomach you know when school resume the way people cut things from hostel is so amazing there is strength there is money from hostel you'll be hearing granos granos bring me five and four sugar that means money is in the pocket. But when semester begins to reduce middle time, nobody shout again. Money don't reduce, your voice will reduce. What they'll be hearing is granite. Granite. Two and one sugar. Then during exam period, when the thing is no more there, the only thing you have is your transport. Nobody shout again. What you'll be hearing is one, no bring sugar. I want to say a very big thank you. I love you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
It's always fun with Marzi Prosper. <laughs> Hallelujah. Don't worry, this is the semester and the session that you'll be smiling even during the exam. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Mark, let's go to the word of God. I want to salute all the men of God in this place. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Thank you so much for fellowshipping with us. Great servants of the Lord serving in his vineyard. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I trust that the Lord will cause his word to prosper in our hearts. And I want to challenge you that this is the year and this is the season where you must make up your mind to put the word to practice. Hallelujah. It's not enough to hear the word. It's not enough to hear Rema. The end of every revelation is that you apply it. It must become part of your life. Hallelujah. It must become part of your life. Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Are you there? If you are still looking for the book of Mark, we are going to punish you. And the punishment is you listen to all the koinonia messages for last year. Because we shared a lot of scripture. So you will keep turning until you are used to the Bible. How many of you know that when you study the Bible, there is an intimacy between you and the word? That when they say open to the book of this, in your mind you have opened there. We used to do a program uh, when I was in secondary school called Sword Drill. I know some of you don't know it. What do you mean you know it? How many of you? Some of you don't know it. The only thing you know is, well, this is a good year. I'm your friend. Let's, let's not go into it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mark 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Can we read it together? One to read. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Hallelujah. I'm doing a teaching tonight titled Conquering Cosmos. Hallelujah. Conquering Cosmos. C O S M O S. Conquering Cosmos. And we must understand the system of the world. God is equipping us. You see, the, the greatest tragedy in Christianity is, is, is not that there are unbelievers or people who are not serious with God. It's that there are so many believers who do not understand the vision of God, the agenda of God, the heartbeat of God, the plan of God. Many believers think that the ultimate desire of God is just to get souls saved and then prepared for heaven. While that is very good, that is not enough. Hallelujah. A few others, especially the Pentecostals and the Charismatics, go a step further. And they believe that all there is to the journey of faith is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And then others feel that when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, then you know you're right. Then you buy a car and wear a nice suit. And that's the proof that you're growing in the Spirit. Hallelujah. But we've been establishing the fact that God has a need. Say after me, God has a need. And God has an agenda. We did not just appear in space. Hallelujah. Just escorting people. And can I tell you something? Right now that we are in the generation of rediscovery. Everybody, we are rediscovering our talents. We are rediscovering purpose. We are rediscovering the giant in us. The lion in us. The beast in us for other people. The antichrist in them everybody is rediscovering all kinds of things that is locked up inside them hallelujah we need to realize that purpose is useless until the kingdom is understood are you following me the concept of purpose the concept of destiny is useless until there is a correct understanding of the kingdom of god 
how that the kingdom of god is not just a religion it's not a movement jesus didn't come as one of the movement or one of the founders of a movement he gave us a system a kingdom of god hallelujah and so mark 15 says and he said unto them go ye into all the world the word here is cosmos the greek word is cosmos now cosmos talks about two things number one cosmos talks about the social environment talks about the people cosmos i follow me now it talks about the people humanity the inhabitants upon the earth number two cosmos talks about a system a system of government a system of rulership a system of a, a system that shapes the mind it controls the mind and the ideologies of people are you following me now and so cosmos doesn't just talk about the people it talks about both the people the social environment and the system that shapes their mind there is a system that is existing in our world today that informs the way we behave are you following me now informs the way we talk informs our priorities and our passions years ago the things that we uphold today as priorities were not priorities is that correct years ago there was no gsm right now if your phone gets missing you almost feel like dying you were alive and doing well without the phone so there are certain systems it's an order that seems to have control it governs the mindset of people and territories and jesus said go into cosmos both the people and the systems and do something he says go into all the world and preach the gospel now can i tell you something i believe in soul winning ministry of great men billy graham reinhard bonke but evangelism as we know it is only part of the gospel that's not all the gospel are you listening to me the gospel is is a value system are you listening to me it's an ideology it's a mindset it's a value system that seeks to enthrone jesus as lord are you following me now when we talk about the gospel good news a value system a mindset a state of being an understanding an alignment of your mind and your spirit that brings you to a position where you understand government and authority where christ is lord are you following me now not many people have taught this in church we graduate people from bible colleges they learn about prosperity they learn about marriage they learn about ministry ethics but they do not learn about the culture the life the value the gospel of the kingdom we preach different kinds of gospels but jesus came with a single gospel he called it the gospel of the kingdom the word kingdom refers to every environment and atmosphere where the governing influence the life the culture the values of the king is enforced and permitted to find expression so when we talk about the gospel of the kingdom we are not just talking about repenting and coming to jesus alone that's wonderful but that's just the initial step if we stop there we will rob the church of standing in partnership with the holy spirit to fulfill the agenda of god and so you must understand that the gospel does not just seek to transform your spirit are you listening to me to deliver you from hell and eternal judgment no after that then romans chapter 12 verse 1 says i beseech you brethren by the mercies of god that ye offer your bodies as living sacrifices holy and acceptable unto god he says which is your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says and do not be conformed to this aeon this world this age the thinking pattern that is found in cosmos do not be conformed he said but be transformed be metamorphosed how by the renewal of your mind and first peter chapter 1 verse 9 calls that the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul are you following me now so the gospel is supposed to affect your spirit 
your soul and your body there's supposed to be an alignment and an understanding for many people our concept of christianity and the gospel is that we come to a point where we become men of god so the day you get born again your vision your goal your pursuit is to get so big that your pastor just calls you and says okay now i see that you are a threat to me in this ministry so go and open a branch and have a nice day and for us that's what we call kingdom advancement it's important that the body of christ comes into an understanding of the system that jesus left with us are you following me now for if we do not come into that understanding we will keep doing what we have been doing and the world will never recognize that jesus christ is lord the average christian does not understand what there is more to our christianity so when you get born again and filled with the holy spirit we are so idle we don't know what to do so someone just turns and looks at a beautiful lady and says, well let's let's get married at least let's keep the journey going somebody else says okay let's get prosperity somebody else says let's open a church or let's open an outreach or an orphanage ladies orphanage or let's open something else but i need you to understand that the kingdom is not haphazard are you listening to me god is not scratching his head thinking okay so what next will we do no the kingdom of god is a structure that has been put in order are you realizing this and so we must come to the understanding of the structure of the kingdom and how we are to function in it and only when let me tell you something what you are seeing right now is a revival that is in place are you listening to me because many believers have taught that christianity has nothing to do with business politics media and all of this and so we just feel that all there is to christianity is come to church sing join choir so when we talk of serving the lord what preachers have taught people is serving in my church that's what they call serving the lord are you following me now so they have put a church and ministry mindset in people and so they believe they are serving god when they are serving in church and we frown at them when they say they have left our church or they have left something we just feel you are wasting you are not serving the kingdom we must grow the body of christ out of a church and a ministry mentality to begin to think of the entire span of the kingdom of our father so that our success and accomplishment is not how eni is doing well it's how the body of christ universal is faring are you following me now and so it says go into cosmos and preach the gospel put in them both the people and the systems a mindset and an ideology that brings everybody to the obedience of christ where they realize that christ is king where his values becomes the value of that system are you listening to me many people complicate the message of the gospel if jesus intended for everyone to obey the gospel then it had to be simple enough i don't need a concordance to understand the gospel i may stress to understand god but how does the person in the village ever come into alignment with kingdom realities the gospel is simple it's an ideology it's a set of values every time you are employed in a company the first thing they do is an orientation even if you entered with first class is that correct and they attempt to put in you the modus operandi and the value of that company and they tell you we don't come late you come late twice you collect your last salary outside the gate and don't come here again i follow me now and they tell you when you are here you dress in a certain manner you smile at your clients whether you are tired or hungry this is the modus operandi are you following me now the degree to which you align yourself with the values of that company is how much you will be promoted and lifted are you following me now now we understand this in the educational and the secular world but not in christianity the average christian is envisioning when he will become a pastor and have a flock of one million people and all we end up doing is just receiving and prophesying to people with no knowledge whatsoever of the program and the agenda of god and so we keep having beggars lining up day and night without growth and every time you see anybody doing anything the day you see him writing a rap you just look at him you say you're rapping as a christian 
and now the person is confused starting standing in the middle of nowhere not i every time i sit i sense an inspiration and then you run to the man of god and say what is this inspiration for says demonic kill it now what carry your bible and what we have ended up doing is growing a crippled church that do not understand the program and the agenda of god we speak in tongues but we do not know to what end we are praying in tongues we cry and we preach about prosperity and kingdom wealth and many people have become an embarrassment for the kingdom because they do not even know the purpose of prosperity we preach about marriage and relationship to what end if we are to be relevant in this generation and if we are to fulfill the agenda of the father then it's paramount that we understand that we are living in a system say after me a system so you see that you really are not a i don't care how many times you come for altar call listen listen let me correct something right now i don't care how many times you come out for altar call you truly are not a christian if you have not imbibed the value system of the kingdom to the point that jesus can be lord of your life can i tell you something there are two conditions to go to heaven write it one is that jesus is savior of your life let me tell you what it means to be savior to be savior means that you have accept the finished work of christ on the cross are you listening to me that you believe that he died for you and you died in him are you listening to me but that's not enough look up it's not enough for jesus to just be savior he must be lord of your life can i tell you something jesus being lord of your life is not by faith why do you call me lord lord and will not do your doing is what validates that he is lord so when he say jesus is savior he says yes that's true when he say lord you are lord he says i'm watching i'm watching prove to me that i am lord by showing me how much you value me how much of my life is priority to you are you following me now there are many believers that do not have a priority if the things of the spirit are still a burden to you jesus is not yet lord hallelujah are you listening to me this is very important we have a generation of people who know jesus as savior and so you, we can do anything bribe in the name of jesus no fear of the lord go that's the command into cosmos and let me tell you something a true apostolic ministry i've said it a true apostolic ministry does not just seek to transform people are you listening to me you change people and influence systems this is the part of the church that the church has been so uninterested we do not think about the people beyond the church boundaries and so we have many superstars in church and the world does not even recognize our impact until we begin to step out and legislate as ambassadors of the kingdom then we are not going to be able to affect our world say amen, amen. and and there's no point talking about great grace and glory if we do not understand our mission in the kingdom so cosmos talks of what what is cosmos talks of the social system say after me the social system now i need you to understand that there is a tragedy on earth believers wake up there is a tragedy on earth what is a tragedy there is a system that's what we call the world system that's what we call babylon it started when cain built a city out of rebellion the bible says cain departed from the presence of god and there he built a city naming it after his son enoch and from that city activities were carried out without the supervision of the spirit christ was no longer king over that building I follow me and everywhere god begins to build zion satan also begins to build his city there is always a conflict of the city of our god the zion of our god and the world system the same thing happened in genesis 11 nimrod wanting to build babel can i tell you something the world is attempting to rebuild the tower of babel again and can i tell you who the workers are guess Guess who the workers are? 
many of us we are actively helping to build Babel he said go to come and let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves and there is a spiritual rebuilding of the tower of Babel and the church does not understand because we have not trained people to understand the kingdom as a system we only see it as a religion that has to do with members coming to receive from pastors and then that's all but God is helping us and building us and equipping us to understand his system and how to rule and reign in this life there's no point talking about anointing and power and miracles and all of these things if we do not understand the system hallelujah do you realize that every day your mind is being influenced by something are you listening to me every day five minutes on air someone will influence millions of people immediately i was having a haircut and they were playing a very rubbish song and i saw one small boy he just stepped down from the chair and this boy was just dancing he was dancing and singing the song and do you know this boy there was no time when this boy sat down to cram that song do you realize that the things we know we almost don't take our time to learn it because in our environment are things that have been orchestrated to shape our minds and our ideologies are you following me now and many believers do not realize that these are mind control systems they control the way we behave to one another there are a few people empowered by satan who represent the government of darkness and according to the leadership of satan these people have mastered the art of creating gadgets creating everything that shapes the mind and the thinking pattern of people i follow me now someone sat down and developed the whole blackberry thing right now people will hit their head on the wall trying to ping one another you're just pinging pinging and you hit yourself and say oh right now you see people moving now i'm not saying these things are bad are you following me now i'm not saying they're bad i'm just telling you what is happening in the world you see somebody looks like a robot with wires all over his body this is for earphone this is for answering calls this is for picking this and wires all over and there's a spare one in case that one and pocket full of batteries and we're moving the system is shaping us shaping us to become what we are not aware of are you listening to me the system defines what we know defines our dress culture the system defines our vocabulary when they need the whole world to begin to speak a particular language all that they do is to find those who are influential why don't they invite you to advertise products do you know why it's not because you are not fine they need more than beauty they need what we call influence say after me influence and so what does um what does beckham have to do with indomie or something and you see they carry a indomie and they draw football on it for so how does that affect your eating indomie they, they are listen 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 this is very important i need you to understand our text says go into all the world are you following me now and every time they want to ask call children outside and tell them who is your role model they will never mention one believer hallelujah it's amazing how you can exert enormous influence upon people and when we talk about the concept of kingdom influence in the church many people frown we call it carnality yet day and night do you realize that the influence of the world is so strong right now in many ministries they vote for the sermons that they preach on sunday so the pastor displays different sermons on their websites and then every member without discernment without everything just logs in and if for any reason uh, right now we do not understand the concept of price and process these are not languages that are that are friendly we have seeker friendly people friendly ministries once there's no ac people get angry you know why 
you didn't learn it because you see the thing is how many times do they give us light in nigeria for us to learn these things and so they began to on your phone it doesn't die easily and so all kinds of things there is a shaping and if church if we do not realize it we will become what we are not aware of one day you wake up to find out that your son is not what you gave birth to again hallelujah i wonder what the slang will now be after five years do you realize that the worldly songs that are written right now they are so spiritual they make no sense to you when you listen to them physically they use words that are not even in the lingua franca again in your english language hallelujah they write songs you don't understand because they know that you love them they encapsulate those songs with melodies that are from the realm of the spirit so that your spirit is drawn to them and you keep confessing those words we do not realize that these are mind control systems are you following me tonight many parents are influenced so right now there are certain parameters that must be in place if a man is 50 years old otherwise he will not fit into his environment and so we see our father suffering for nothing this guy is trying to build the third house everybody is dying in the house and he's strangling everybody because there is a system that has controlled his mind it used to be for young people but right now it's everybody are you listening to me mind control system there is a particular slang and language that if you cannot use in another community you do not belong so many of us force ourselves we browse day and night through our phone to learn the current lingua franca and we call it acclimatizing ourselves to babylon do you see how we are helping ourselves to rebuild the tower of babel that rebellious city so the gospel is not just preaching to get men born again are you listening to me the gospel is a mindset a value system that separates you from the world system and brings you to a point where from your life and your activity you demonstrate the lordship of jesus christ mazi prosper is here there's the entertainment industry you can ask him and he'll tell you when he started how many churches insulted you how many churches called you an unserious person can i tell you something our concept of ministry must change our concept of ministry has been a man of god wearing suit and then you come and sit down and then a lady gives you water and someone will be admiring me here and say hey god this guy is enjoying you see that's our concept of ministry that's our concept of ministry and so all our goal and our prayer when we pray in tongues that's the picture we see and then the moment you get little honor you call one lady and say have you not seen what they are doing that's why we seek to give an orientation that this is not the definition of success are you listening to me the bible says that the fivefold will train the body that they will do the work of the ministry so when jesus says go into all the world where did he say systems the education as a system banking and finance as a system are you listening to me music arts and culture because there are so many people that sense that the lord is calling them into the fashions ministry and the moment they come we men of god stand with our lack of ignorance and lack of understanding and alignment to kingdom things and we just kill them like eli when they are hearing the voice when god is calling samuel we will tell samuel to go back and sleep hallelujah Forbes, Forbes, hundred richest people none of them as i know is a christian who publicly acknowledges the lordship of god how do you like that now don't say it doesn't matter because they are affecting our economy and they will 
cripple us to a point that we must abide by their terms do you realize that there are many companies that we seek to work in we do not know the values of these companies we are suffering and trying to work for them and as we are working for them guess what they are doing with your money guess they are funding all kinds of things from terrorism to prostitution to doing there are so many companies in this country that are the forefront of women trafficking and all kinds of things and all we are thinking about because we will not give ear to understanding God's economic system and coming to a place of kingdom influence all we are concerned is to get your 80,000 a month and every time a voice rises to talk satan begins to wire the minds of the people to think all we're talking about is just prosperity and goodness and me and my wife and children no are you following me tonight is, is god doing something to your mindset if we don't take charge a time do you realize that in this country right now and the ambassador came over and he was just talking to me do you realize that glow and all of these companies if you want to do an advert or you want to work with them the moment you mention jesus you are out true or false come on answer me true or false most of the television programs that are held now there are lots of people who have written songs and have dramas and plays and things that will glorify jesus christ but the moment you bring it what happens People just kill it. They tell you at most, just say divine. Divine is okay. At least everybody knows it's not of this realm. And now a lot of people are saying it doesn't matter. And while you're sitting down, God is raising in you to be a media mogul. You see yourself in dreams, owning TV stations. And the moment you want to move, people tell you just read, just calm down. It's okay to marry a pastor, 20 members, and move on. What do we think was you? What was God's idea when Jesus came and died? What was in his mind? Many of us will get to heaven. And I pray it doesn't happen. But that we get to heaven and see how much we contributed in the advancement of Satan's kingdom. Are you following me now? And then when believers open universities... We have a lot of Christians who are talking and speaking nonsense and saying, ah, these men of God, they are establishing universities for their personal gains. Are you not seeing what is happening in our university systems? Where students are not even interested in reading again. Everybody just wants to go. Just go. Sleep with the lecturer. Do, go. Get out. Get out of the university. When a student comes in, as he's holding his admission letter, he's already imagining himself at the convocation square how you get there is none of your business i just want to get out someone who has not held his first lecture is already crying and saying i want because they understand that this is a pattern that has been put in the system to define success and so they just want to pass through it and they will do anything to get to it and there are many believers who are preaching who are jumping right here while unbelievers are designing curriculums do you realize that there are very few believers that are writing books the textbooks that we use in our classes that educate us for six years you sit down under a mindset that has no honor for the kingdom and at the end of it you receive your certificate but you are 60 percent babylon and 40 percent zion and it's with that mindset you step in that mindset will choke the faith that you have such that when you come out what you used to esteem as faith becomes foolishness the moment you step out there are certain things we honor and we i mean when someone starts working we are under pressure so much pressure the moment you start working you earn 200 000, people start telling you please will you get a car buy a car your parents begin to mount pressure on you they say what is left you are working don't bring shame to us it's a system are you listening to me and we are that generation that will begin to question the things that have been the status quo are you listening to me i am provoking you to begin to question the things that have informed your mind because there are many of us who are falling down the ditch we inherited something from a true leader provokes you to begin to consider the foundation of the things that have informed your value system 
because at the rate at which we are going jesus christ is being strangled in every strata they want to strangle him until he comes out let me tell you how they are doing it look up right now the world is promoting associations and things that bring men to a neutral ground are you listening to me that's why football is being promoted in football nobody fights not on account of religion not anything i follow me now right now when a child is um a child has a right to leave his parents and even disown them in america i hope you know that and we're embracing it nicely another thing is what we call the credit system in our economy what a foolish and ungodly economic system let me tell you what the credit system is buy everything on credit look fine on credit buy a big house on credit and leave that's really what we call generational causes because right now there are many flamboyant people that we admire and many nigerians are walking lying claiming they marry you bring your sister and say say you are my wife oh let's get this green visa say you are my wife you go out if you say you are not this and we drive people and we name all kinds of things one man married to 50 people because he wants to get visa and we are running to america do you know the disaster that is happening in america america is the country with the most debt in the world has about one i think 1.7 or 170 trillion us dollars they are leaving it for their the children the foolish children who don't go to schools again they are not doing anything the average child gets up and the next thing he knows is computer game in that computer game there is shooting and right now they do it 3d so that the child will be exposed to blood and violence and while the child sits down the next thing he looks at his younger brother and his mind has been controlled he flies from the younger brother and punches him when blood comes out he laughs because that's what has been trained in our children as a definition of a macho man welcome believers we are entering a truly new age and can i tell you something if we do not i hope you know our parents will die or leave us when this mindset matures it will be your turn you will be a glad father of three or five or ten children as you wish but let me tell you something there is a real system and it's important that we train our minds otherwise there is disaster on the way to happen hallelujah an average child grows and you see the child ask children what toy do you want me to buy for you what's the first thing they'll say who taught them who taught them and right now they've made it in such a way that when you shoot at least something comes out and the child gets happy he comes to look at you and just pours water on your face and he's laughing he's envisioning the day you hold the real one at 13 years there is a gang prepared by babylon that this child steps into do you realize the disaster that is happening believers wake up this is not about e and i this is about a matter of urgency this is what is in the heart of the father there is a need not only and those who have even taught about the kingdom all we teach is overcoming that means run away do you know where are you going to run to the bible says we are in the world jesus prayed a prayer for you if you do not know let me tell you the prayer jesus prayed for you he said father i pray that you don't bring them out of that system preserve them you are not going anywhere jesus has prayed for you already and the father has answered it it's in john 17. it's a prayer that had been answered before you were born you are not so running away in a sense of fleeing are you going to stop watching tv there are almost no decent films for you to entertain yourself with right now cartoons that used to be very enlightening right now cartoons are demonic you initiate your child your child looks at you wakes up you are sleeping and you wake up and you see your child holding a shoe and wants to hit your head he's trying to children are not good listeners but they are good imitators and so those graphic images have been so much a child at age two or three or four sits down on a laptop and all the pornographic sites have been paid for they are free and you want to download a message and they tell you for 25 dollars you know that's a christian website <laughs> am i challenging you 
many believers do not know this can i tell you satan has crippled our minds so that we do not understand the kingdom or we are not interested in it whether you are interested in it or not i bring you good news is coming there is a rebuilding of the tower of babel and if saviors do not rise out of zion to judge the mount of esau there will be catastrophe in the years that are coming the antichrist is not just a person the antichrist is a system there is a figure who will head that system but there is a system and is at work right now hallelujah you want to market granite oil you are putting a lady who is half naked the granite oil is a lady now for heaven's sake how does grant right now you want to work in the bank you are not pretty you're not getting a job i hope you know that graduate with first class keep your first class once you're not pretty and you're looking nice they look at you they don't hide it they examine you are you going to bring profit to the bank or not i've had the privilege to talk to a few bankers and some of the people you smile at as marketers are trading their eternal destiny for eighty-five thousand naira. There is shame on the church and we must arise we are here boasting of our cars boasting of many branches we are opening and we are not making any effect because we are not going into the world and so we are talking about a takeover generation this is why we need the anointing if we are talking of a year of great grace and glory we must not just run away from the system because the system will come and meet us the Bible says a time will come when men will tell the mountain fall on us and the mountain will say I'm not falling anything so how many of us are interested in what I'm sharing this night the if you are not interested just pray to die quickly but if you are going to live in this Nigeria it's happening faster how how about having someone who will receive the spirit of Bezalel and design a computer that the logo is the cross how about somebody designing an operating system that when you switch it on it says for god so love the world everybody must buy it it's, it's configured in the software you can't change it aren't you realizing the things that are happening and our concept of christianity is ba 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 and a few superstars touch a few people we fall down and the world is laughing when the owner of mtv was asked a question i'm provoking you he said we hear that you influence the mind of children from age 7 to 15 he laughed he said we don't influence them we own them let me tell you the implication i know you are 30 years old but the problem is this by the time those you do you know those children are growing and god is speaking to you and saying a school and you are saying no a church that's my concept of ministry god is saying a school that you offer additional one of the visions of ian i will look forward to times when we will have a primary school who have schools and part of the programs we introduce to the curriculum will introduce a program called koinonia and spiritual growth every child must offer it that you teach your child you hold ten thousand and give him one thousand and say son every time you get money according to the economy of heaven you tie watch me do it as a father and he said put your own and the child does it do you realize that there is need to invade the minds if you forget about invading the minds of the people you have not changed them i don't care how many times they fall and stand up you must invade their minds you are glorious so glorious in your ways this is what we call the new revival the revival is not going to happen like many people think there are many men of god who will be shocked at the revival that is coming because let me tell you who are the revivalists the revivalists will no longer be those who are boasting and making themselves god on stage that you must come and answer to them to get the counsel of the spirit sorry for them god is navigating another part he's raising men who he will equip by the spirit you see our concept of preaching is going to change that you are god will send you to the system mazi is here he has entered certain places are you following me now and everywhere as he's preaching he is where he is today on account of the kingdom if he were only to compromise many television channels will carry him pick him and use him 
but on account of the kingdom he has made up his mind that he will live by the value of the kingdom do you realize that if an influential man says god bless you that's enough to bring more salvations than one evangelistic meeting imagine michael jackson just saying i love god not even the lord not even jesus just i love god so god wants to give you a company that before you start you gather everybody and say let's lift up our voice and bless the one who made it possible for us today it is your company whoever is not interested can find one. when he goes out and darkness covers the earth he will come back and god this is the real revival saviors shall come out of zion and they shall judge the mount of esau are you prepared for the things that god is doing this is a time where you sense a prophetic call upon your life you know that you are working strongly in the prophetic but every time you look at the boutique and you think of suit god will say no way i'm sending you to the navy and they say lord navy with the prophetic grace god said that's none of your business the mission is follow me just go and then we'll need more people more prophets and apostles in the police so that when there are terrorists hiding by prophetic insight you get up and listen listen this is god's strategy for invading the world system there are some messages that are attacked strongly by the forces of darkness god is raising many of us let me tell you something the way i'm dressed like this there are certain circles in this world that will not receive me they'll say just go out and so god will say all right no problem gentlemen come and god gives you an understanding and gives you a value system you see that's why all this quarrel that we are doing and shouting in church and trivializing a lot of things is because we do not understand the agenda of god and so god causes you to be a millionaire hallelujah and when god causes you to be a millionaire what happens because it's, it's part of the life of the poor to beg when they come without invitation you have people and you begin to teach them the things of god cecilia ibru during her thanksgiving had a number of unbelievers coming they didn't come because they love god they they came because they need her can you make yourself so competent that the world must need you and then you can give them your terms hallelujah when you're walking somewhere you you suffer in school you study for years with all the strike the moment you graduate and they are giving jobs they just call and the manager says he wants to see you privately and he says sir i fear the lord he says so what are you doing in my office go to church and he says sir i'm, I'm serious i fear the lord but because we are desperate i see a mystery servants are on horses while sons princes walk afoot and the man says if you're interested in your job this is the part of the story we don't say when we're giving thanksgiving testimony in church come and join me sing hallelujah jehovah Jireh has done me well and then everybody dances praise the lord i graduated with third class and without interview i got a job calm down tell us the whole story what happened if it's the favor of god let's know it's the favor of god i can tell you there are many people who have compromised the values of the kingdom and we men of god cannot speak because they are bringing tithe to us so if you speak they will stop bringing the tithe no more suit because we have trained ourselves to depend on the sheep that we have been called to save for our prosperity and would not run to him i would lift up my eyes to the hills from whence come my help conquering cosmos there is a system that is antichrist and so everyone must come to a point where jesus is lord of your life and that everywhere you are he is because you have one passion you have one mission you have one goal there are many of us right now who can start different pages on facebook that glorify jesus christ 
I remember one time a gentleman sent one very nasty message on Facebook and I saw a Jimmy researching scriptures when I saw him lining two or three Bibles I knew that gentleman was in trouble and Jimmy got the verses I went on Facebook and addressed that gentleman how many times have people sent their thoughts and then you're on Facebook and you see someone write something against your God and you just say, well when you're in Rome behave like the Romans do this passive non-offense Christianity will not advance the kingdom are you listening to me when you write a song they edit it and they say they must take you to big brother Nigeria remove this remove that remove this don't you have values say after me I have a value system everybody say it inside and outside I have a value system we are not a bunch of hopeless people waiting for the world to give us values are you listening to me we have values we have a goal that Jesus be enthroned be honest with me look up maybe okay our minds have been changed here how many of our parents go to work because they are seeking an opportunity to let the kingdom of God come in that company how many when did you ever see your father and your mother get up and say as I step into this office Lord salary or no salary let your kingdom come you will never do that when you are poor and broke are you listening to me we need men and women who love God more than money let me tell you something for as long as the church is not empowered enough the world will keep baiting us with offers we cannot resist they will bait you and they will make you to bow to bear and you will bow before you know it because the vicissitudes of life will strangle you you will suddenly wake up and see three children saying daddy are you say where did you come from they say you are our daddy <laughs> when when did all this happen suddenly you realize that he was faster than you ever thought the time will come when they will attempt to strangle I, have you not heard that nations will rise against nations and kingdoms systems there will be a real clash and God is preparing you and I hope you realize that Satan will not cross his legs when he sees you being committed with the wealth of the kingdom to silence the activity of Babylon I look forward to certain people who will become real kingdom financiers that you are so blessed the next thing is the moment you hear that there is one who is singing unto the glory of God you come and say we are, we are giving you a record label you are producing we are giving you the best sound quality and we have access to all the marketers every radio station in this country must hear that he is Lord how many of us are that empowered when we start doing a five minutes talk show on NTA we celebrate it and we dance and we jump the remaining 23 hours how many minutes someone someone comes up and speaks nonsense you change channels you don't have any other channel to change so you listen and while you are not around you are busy looking for money working till night your child is there gullible absorbing everything they are giving and then when you come back say so boy what did you learn guess what it's not a memory verse he will recite to you we need to true leaders think of posterity many of us say i'm too young do you realize while you are saying oh god when will my wedding come god is uh, when will the change come are you ready to change the generation you want to raise otherwise we will raise another casualty god had to intercept in our generation otherwise we would have become like our parents hallelujah we'll soon pray but i'm redefining the concept of ministry and the kingdom how that we need to arise and conquer cosmos no no me i'll just calm down quietly i don't want to become an international figure i don't want pride take the world give me jesus really By the grace of God we are involved in paying the school fees of many people and taking care of the welfare of many people 
there are a number of people in this place who have been disowned by their families on, a, on account of declaring the Lordship of Jesus Christ over their lives. And we have a bunch of believers who pray in tongues, share the grace and leave those people. What happens to them? When they backslide and go into the world, we are the first to open our mouths and say, you see them, they are not firm in their faith. What do we think governs these people? When people are hungry and there's no food, the lady is crying and somebody is telling her, only bow to bear. You are suffering too much. And when they come to us and say, sorry, there's, I, I need food to eat. What happens? We just say, sorry, uh, I wish I have something to help you with. There's not much, but I pray that the Lord who sent me will bless you. I release upon you an anointing for favor. And then the lady gets up. And while she's trekking from Koinonia to go to her house, someone intercepts and she's tired. And the person says, I was wondering if you would want a ride. You say, well, it's just a ride. Don't you realize that Satan tempts you at the point of your desperation? Church, if we do not rise up, Satan will leave us preaching on pulpit and be destroying everybody. A time will come when demons will sit down in churches. Mega churches. And demons will be the members. And the ministers are busy working for God. They are out of alignment with his program and his system. We are working building branches and satan says please keep working distract them and many people are coming because all that we focus on is membership oh we are just trying make make sure they are happy give them fun make sure they are working well if anybody complains of headache wrong with first aid miracle no just make it happen let them be warm and comfortable and while that is happening satan is invading our system you buy bonds before you eat it you see a writing that you must read you look at it and satan has been honored how many of you make bonds and make puff puff every time you think of putting something and say something like in christ uh do not it doesn't sound fashionable isn't it that's the problem that's exactly what i've tried to communicate our mindsets have been worked upon but if i call it if i call it um Omega donut. How about that? What does that mean to you? With respect to the kingdom. This is deliverance. This is a deliverance service this night. This is a deliverance service where the Lord is helping us. Are you listening to me? The greatest deliverance is that you align yourself with kingdom reality. I hope as we are laughing, we are getting something. Go ye into all the systems. Did he say run away? Go ye. Go ye into the media, Aaron. And when someone comes to plan events, while you talk to the person, you say, I was wondering, um, tell me your perception about life and the things of the kingdom. And then you get to talk with the person. I look forward to times when we are about to mix, to make a speech. And then we speak and say now unto the king the whole world is listening to you millions of people unto the king eternal they don't like what you are saying but your competence will make room for you and while you are reading the speech people are suddenly getting healed cancers are disappearing it's not an anointed service but the kingdom is there and since the kingdom is there all the attributes of the kingdom must show forth and the moment you are speaking the prince of dubai or somebody comes to meet you and you look at him and tell him you've been having a challenge in your family what's the problem and he says how did you know he say okay let's i'm inviting you over for lunch and you have the money to pay for his lunch then you invite him over for lunch and while you speak to him he gives you an opportunity to run a crusade see friends do you love god you must embrace his system this is the paradigm that i seek to bring for us tonight if this is your mindset then god will give you the anointing if this is your mindset then you will have the charisma and the influence do not reject the influence of the kingdom realize that god is bigger than eni say after me god is bigger than eni say god is bigger than koinonia god is even bigger than you your kingdom reigns your kingdom reigns 
Outside of being a minister, and God shifted my mindset when He made me know that if He makes you an entrepreneur, is also ministry. Are you realizing there are people who I have access today, not because I'm a preacher, but on, a, on account of offering products and services that they need that they cannot provide? How many of you have songs that are locked up in your spirit that the nations need to hear? How many of you have visions? How many drama ministries are quietly lying down here that have been kicked out from churches? How many of you have voices that have not been received or embraced? No one will want to sponsor you. How many kingdom financiers are hearing the cry of the spirit? How many people are sensing a call to go into the military and we are preaching them out of it? How many people are sensing a call to be politicians? It's not like they want money. Something in there is a restlessness. It's an alignment of destiny. I bring you a message. There is a mandate upon us. Go ye into cosmos. Let there be media giants who will arise, who will not only snap for Koinonia, but one day will stand and snap in AIT. Moguls who will be voices. I look forward to times when they will interview you, when UN will call you, when UNESCO will call you. UNESCO will call the White Dolphin Foundation and say, what solution? That's when your anointing will get into work. Your prophetic grace, your apostolic grace is useless when you cannot permeate the system. It's useless. I look forward to times when you will have why are we leaving the Sheratons? Why are we leaving the, the, the Lemeridians and all of these things? These are not people that are godly. I look forward to times when you will have a hotel. And in your hotel there is a rule. No prostitutes. You bring any prostitutes, we kick you out of the hotel. Whether or not you believe it. Let me tell you, the excellence in your hotel will force people to say, no problem, let's just come. And when they come, the only programs they can watch is CNN, CBN, your channel, your own channel, where Jesus alone will be glorified. I'm sharing with you a piece of my passion. This is what I see. My ultimate goal is not to stand on the pulpit and preach. My ultimate goal is to be on the frontier of prophecy. To use the apostolic grace he has given me to invade the system. Every one of us has a defined system. Arise generals, go ye into that system and begin to be agents of national transformation. Do the masters, do the PhD if it will take you. Go, go into the system, gain the access and enter that system and introduce the value system. Make the universities, build them, build the secondary schools, build the primary schools, build the libraries. Go ahead and train yourself. Get a master's in cinematography. Get whatever you get. Buy or open a studio. Name it Rafa Studios. He reigns. Until we are ready to invade the system this way. Then forget about what we call Christianity. This puts you in a sense of responsibility. Are you following me now? So when Satan brings sickness, you see why God will want to heal you. Because he knows that you are purpose your mind to be relevant. You didn't learn how to cook. You think God gave it to you so that your husband will appreciate you? Is he the only person on earth? There is a mandate bigger than your husband. That your restaurant becomes the best in Zaria. That you, your excellence is compelling. Many of you have come today because of the prayers and because of the excellence. Now that you are here, you can hear this. Can you receive the anointing and take this back to the system? 
Many of you need to go back when you're on break. Your parents have primary school. They say, Come and be the principal. You have graduated before service. And you laugh and say, Me, God forbid, I got first class. Are you out of your mind? Do you not realize that there is a goalie? The goalie is bigger than your personal desire. Your job was never supposed to finance your, your life. I've been criticized for years for misleading people. Let me tell you something. If all you have as your mindset is job, you will never prosper. Satan will keep dragging us. Go ye. The true spirit of evangelism is beyond a three-day crusade. The true spirit of evangelism is a takeover spirit. It's a true evangelistic and an apostolic spirit. You will not, many of us just stand, you just talking, wear your, your all kinds of things, stand near someone and be spitting saliva on him. Brother, this and that and that, I want to tell you there's a heaven, I want to tell you there's a hell, I want to tell you Jesus is Lord. You are talking to the person for 10 minutes, you don't know his name. The person is worried with a challenge and he says, Brother, do you know what has happened to me in this life? I need you to know that I have not eaten for two days. You say, well, I bring you a message that is greater than food. I need you to know that there's an eternal. But what are we saying? That's why we teach you about the principles of the kingdom. Not for us to buy Lincoln Navigator. And when I drop from it, they say, man, is this the president of ENI? A young man so rich like this? To, to what end is that? Let me tell you i've been delivered i have been thoroughly delivered by the spirit of god i understand what the mandate of the kingdom is and when you are on your heels god will bring the members god is tired of sending members to ministries where we punish them and all that we do we create an extra room inside and then jamfa is the one inside this is a prophet then when i preach i charge your spirit and then you enter there and then as you are entering the first thing you encounter is the basket <laughs> according to your problems let me tell you something there is a shift coming in our concept of church and ministry there are many people who have turned the kings those who are supposed to reign in life and has made them animals you come to church you don't know anything about the ways of god all you know is let's go to church they serve communion to what end you do not know i shall not die but live to what end i don't know you are awakening the giant in you to go to where we teach on prosperity with no vision we teach on relationship with no vision valentine's day is where 14th many of us are warming up to be misled again for another one year until you understand that you are in, that's why i bless god like i know I, there's an announcement we put here there are visionary ministries that have programs that are a subset of the kingdom this is not a movement this is the message the kingdom we are going to pray conquering cosmos i bring you a message tonight that in this season of great grace and glory you have an assignment if you open a church and only five members come for one year close it and open a business where they come to buy something start selling and preaching when they come you can go back I'm tired of people who are not moving at the at the at the things of god you sit down there how many people come to beer palace your church is near a beer parlor you are seeing them coming and they are paying millions you see 70 or 90 people people are chewing finish drinking and go out now and they are waiting and you are there shouting ringing bells up and down nobody's coming to your church why don't you act it is how they come is not an issue attract them attract them there are many of you that don't believe in praying in tongues you didn't even believe in jesus christ the only thing you believe in, in good is good music and when you add that the worship team is good you say let me come and check out there are many of you who the reason why you came is you like a sense of you just hear that there are people inside and koinonia even has overflow is it really let's come and see it doesn't matter what brought you welcome that's the point so we use every means given to attract you and when you come the sword of the spirit is already rotating around your head and when it lands it it divides it cuts the soul the marrow everything and brings out the life in you friends there is a burden upon you that only you have been set aside to achieve and to accomplish
I bring you a message. We are very serious people. Tomorrow we are going to be having a leaders workshop. We are not just thinking of how to advance here and I know this is just for the leaders in the house. Every ministry, every true ministry must have a vision. Our vision is not just salvation. There is something. We have an impute to the body. There is a unique impute that you must find that you give the body. If you do not have it, you don't have a ministry. Hallelujah. So it's time for you to arise. Every time we talk of arise, many of us, we just imagine ourselves going out from a well and sitting inside a gym. Arise means wake up to your responsibility. The purpose of rights is for responsibility. You know your rights in Christ so that you can perform your kingdom responsibility. You sit down and your roommate is speaking vulgar languages. You talk, don't insult the person, but you talk to the person in love and tell the person, do you realize that your words have power? Don't just say, do you know God hates talking bad? You have not ministered to the person. I'm stirring up the real spirit of evangelism in us. This is the true spirit of evangelism. By God's grace, we'll be announcing some of our evangelical packages that we have. But right now, it's time for us to pray. And we're going to pray and ask the Lord to help us. And grant us the grace, the influence, the power, the anointing, the understanding. For there is a rebuilding of the Tower of Babel. And the sons of Jacob must arise and judge the Mount of Esau. Rise up on your feet. Rise up on your feet, inside and outside. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit over this word that you have heard. Your generation will bless you. Lay Baba Raso Bosh. and pray the entrance of thy word give it light and understanding go ahead and pray that's why you came when we call you a champion you really are a champion Pray in the spirit. Save your salaries out of Zion, and they shall judge the Mount of Esau. Go ye into cosmos. Take over, take over, take over cosmos, take over the media, take over, take over the pulpit, take over the universities, take over with the mindset that he is king, he is Lord. This is the takeover generation. Arise, O generals, go ye into cosmos, go ye into the media, go ye into the business world, go ye, go ye, set up the restaurants, offer products and services that will attract many, go to the schools, the Lord is calling the values of the kingdom the spirit of god is not in us just to do church go to the embassies go into the political scene he is calling there is an anointing in the military in the navy in the air 
your force. Oh, there is an anointing. Saviors shall arise out of Zion and they shall judge the Mount of Esau. The agenda is beyond money, it's beyond marriage. Come on, pray. You are not ordinary. There is an apostolic spirit upon you. Rise up, kingdom financiers, media giants, Facebook, Twitter, to go. The Lord is calling and throne Christ. Music ministers, arise. Businessmen, arise. Scholars, doctors, professors, arise by the Spirit. Diplomats, hear the sound of the Spirit. I bring you an apostolic call that the systems of this world will come and align with the systems of our God. Rise to a point of influence. Develop yourself. Add value. Until the world cannot resist you. Come on, pray. Business apostles, business prophets, IT, IT moguls, the next Zuckerbergs, the next Steve Jobs, rise up IT giants, the next doctors, the next lawyers, the next presidents, the next governors, for the sake of his majesty rise up, the next family life coaches, time to arrive, go ye into cosmos, give them a mentality, give them a mentality, give them a mentality, the value of the kingdom, upholding his majesty, upholding his majesty, I challenge you, arise, the seed of glory is in you, the seed of greatness, you may not look like it, arise, we are the saviors on one hand we are praying in the spirit on another hand we are taking over cosmos pray the spirit generate energy hallelujah I know I'm not ordinary I know I'm not ordinary the grace of God bringing me to a point of influence where I will declare to the nations that Jesus is Lord. God is giving ideas. God is restoring dreams. God is putting new passions. Let the dream come alive. There is a cause to live for. There is a cause to live for. Beyond your job, there is a cause to live for. The training is worth it. The building is worth it. You are the light. The definition of darkness is the world without you. Arise. Take over generation. Go ye into cosmos. Take over channel O. Take over MTV. Take over the internet. Take over the internet. Open websites. Open blog pages. And throne him as Lord. Open schools. Open libraries. Institutions. My generation 
generation will hear the voice of the king even in my life my generation will hear the voice of his majesty come on pray you are registering yourself for greatness by the spirit hallelujah listen there are many books lying in this place to be written that will enthrone him as Christ you may not start writing it now but are you developing yourself in writing God has told you you are going to become a public figure although you may be in the bank now have you let the banking job take away your mind from your focus Hillsong titled their album for this cause there is a cause I tell you the truth my mindset is not to be a preacher my mindset is not to sit down and preach and carry a big tummy and cross my leg and now people just keep coming for deliverance cases when I drop the mic here I get to walk every one of us here when we drop the wheel we are doing something for the kingdom I challenge you servants of God there are books to write there are websites to open there are blog pages to open the trouble is many of us want a ministry where you are king of kings and lord of lords and you have many members come so you want a secretary and a PA and all of that there are many of us you see one of the mindsets we're going to round up soon one of the mindsets I trust that God will take out of our minds how old is Zuckerberg 27 27 years old many of you are getting blessed from Facebook we are streaming live to many people right now only God knows how many people are streaming this program in a few weeks time we are going to start live telecasts to people from the internet listen listen to me if those who discovered this thing sat down and said I'm young our parents have called us young every time we bring ideas they say small boy my friend go and concentrate in your school are you going to allow people to kill the vision of the spirit in you there is nothing wrong with you writing something and taking it to people in NTA or all of these things there is nothing wrong why don't you open a blog page that helps people to answer questions spiritual questions about their lives must everybody know you are ministry in that respect our concept of ministry must change radically not everybody is called into the fivefold but everybody is called into ministry everybody the condition to be in ministry is that you are in the kingdom hallelujah there are songs that we need to write there are songs that we need to receive look beyond E and I look beyond Koinonia I will cheat you if all I'm looking for is to gather people who pay allegiance to me I'm not a demon I've been delivered by the Spirit of God the kingdom of God is above and beyond the personal agenda of any man our job is to raise to train to equip you to make you leaders in your own spheres of influence are you listening to me I leave you with a question tonight I want you to write it as bold as you can on your notepad will you feel God that's a question I have write it as bold as you can and meditate on it will you feel God not will we no will you as a person feel God will you feel God if Zuckerberg did not launch Facebook there are many souls that have been saved through Facebook there are many people there are some of you can I tell you something 
there are some of you who want God to use you for ministry you can start from somewhere some of you can say every week I will order 10 messages 10 koinonia messages that's my job I will package it in a CD you mustn't say Aaron Aaron International Power Gospel Center no you can say I'll package it and I would I will take it to Kiwa or take it to Zaria City and distribute it may not be much nobody may know but that's your own contribution do you realize that you're advancing the kingdom so the worship team look at them they have been standing with me for hours why are they standing you know what motivates them they are not just trying to bring a pride to koinonia it is the sacrifice for many of you to to enjoy the atmosphere and receive is this kingdom of advancement of course it is are you listening to me they are rehearsing everything the week to be as competent i mean every time mondays fridays i mean thursdays and all of that are you listening to me the members of the media they are here moving around you see the concept is the kingdom once the kingdom is your priority nobody will have to push you into doing some things again you will seek an opportunity to show the lord that you are relevant in his kingdom hallelujah one last prayer point you're going to hold the hands of your neighbor and we're going to pray as a family of faith we're going to say lord listen although you are holding the hand of your neighbor you're going to say lord reveal my place in destiny to me are you listening to me my place in destiny i i i reveal my uniqueness where have you planted me to be relevant in your kingdom i'm tired of escorting people from killer to post lift up your voice and pray reveal my place in destiny go ahead and pray oh god a revelation you may be serving in koinonia now but your life is bigger Grant me a revelation of my place in life and destiny. Go ahead and pray. Reko pray seke pari adabash. Rengo so so peteke nos. Reveal my place in destiny. I don't want to be busy here and there doing nothing. Let my assignment occupy me. Let me prepare for it. Reveal my place in destiny. Your place is not church. Your place in the system, not in Koinonia. There is a role you have to play beyond church in the system in the system you have a role to play hallelujah hallelujah i challenge you please don't fail god we must train ourselves to a point where your christianity is not just on sundays it is an ideology are you listening to me don't forget what you have learned tonight that the kingdom life is an ideology is a mindset is a value system that's what i'm doing to you it's a it's a mindset it's an alignment so that you begin to think kingdom the agenda of god can i tell you something when you begin to think that you become immortal until your assignment is completed you know why because you have aligned yourself so much god would rather a nation perish for your sake and then your evangelism will be effective because when you get people born again you follow them up you don't follow them up by telling them in our church this is what we do that's not follow up that's indoctrination follow up is to introduce them to the kingdom life and teach them the basic principles of the kingdom i 
trust that God will cause us to be matured by the Spirit. Hallelujah. One of our activities this year is to engage everybody. Are you listening to me? I will put fire in your bones until you are meaningfully engaged. Either training yourself, there's no idleness this year. Are you listening to me? You are either training yourself or you are doing something for the kingdom. We have different activities. You are training yourself. So you are reading a book or you are writing something or you are resting or you are meditating. There's no idleness. You now begin to value your time. When God tells you you have two years to manifest and he tells you the things you must do within that two years, your enemy is the person who comes to distract you and waste your time. Are you listening to me? Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for teaching us. Creating a responsibility in our hearts to invade the world system. Creating an urgency in our hearts that there is a rebuilding of the Tower of Babel. And that the sons of Jacob must arise and judge the Mount of Israel. Father, let the seed of the word of God that has been sown tonight prosper. Let it prosper in our hearts. Hallelujah. When you go back to your rooms, teach others. Are you listening to me? You mustn't call it a Bible study. When you go to your, teach others, go back home and teach others. This is the year you engage yourself. Hallelujah. Very quickly, if you're worshiping with us for the first time tonight, I'd like you to leave your seat very quickly. Please leave your seat and come. We love you and we want to acknowledge your presence. Appreciate them as they come inside and outside. First timers. Quickly, please appreciate them. They are coming. First timers. Inside and outside. We love you. Keep clapping. They are coming. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate every one of them. We love you. We value you. You are special. You mean a lot to us. Please just keep coming. Just keep coming. Touch us directly in the space for you. Keep clapping inside and outside. I appreciate them. Great men and women of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for making our time to worship with us. I hope you were blessed. Hallelujah. We're going to pray for you that the Lord will bless you and cause that his word will prosper. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you just pray in other tongues for one minute? Rakata bada kasha braga de bala da baka ta braga de bala de boko so pranda kata bala da baka she pekaya. Mam braga ta baka ta braga de bala de boko so braga ta. Raga da braga de bala da boko so braga ta braga de bala de boko she pras kata ba. Raga ta ba 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 kata yada ba. Raga pras kasa ta baka ta braga de bala de boko. Raga ta braga de bala da boko she braga de bala de boko. Raga ta braga de bala da baka ta braga de bala de boko so braga de bala de boko. Rakata bakata praga da bala da ba. Rakata bakata praga da bala da ba. Rakata bakata praga da bala da ba. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Outside, make sure you are praying in the Holy Ghost. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it, the fiery presence of the Holy Ghost. You have taken all the glory, you have taken all the praise, you have taken all dominion, you have taken all the praise, and you have made them yours. You have made them yours. 
have taken all the glory. You have taken all the praise. You have taken all dominion. You have taken all the praise. You have made them yours. I am praise the King. You have made them yours. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the rock. The one upon whom we stand. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have no ministry without his presence. We have no message without his presence. His presence can do more than a thousand words can speak. Moses said, do not let us depart from here if your presence will not go with us. For how shall they know that we are a separated people? How shall they know you are distinguished? For your glorious presence. We thank you for your presence. That majestic presence. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. When you cultivate the art of God's presence, you will walk in dimensions of the spirit that will make you afraid because you are operating of the word is not about English no no otherwise some of us will not be in ministry but Paul said when I came to you I did not come with the excellency of speech but I came with the demonstration of the spirit that your faith will not be upon the wisdom of a man but upon the power of God what you see happening in this place that effect on your body that effect on your mind and your spirit that you cannot help this is not psychology this is the manifest presence of God. For when he shows up, both animate and inanimate things, no matter how hardened your heart is, the Bible says that his presence, even the mountains, harder than your hearts, keep like lambs. This is why we cultivate the art of his presence. We have no message without his presence. In a generation and time when everybody wants to say something everybody is saying something Eli who said I heard you speak and so I kept quiet because I thought you were older than me and you should have something to say but Eli who was quick to note to them that when it comes to the realm of delivering the wisdom of God it's not about age he said but there is a spirit there is a presence that can tabernacle in a man and the inspiration that derives from that presence can make any man of understanding the capacity to comprehend spiritual things and deliver them with accuracy such that you can walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and grant that the things that the Holy Ghost wants in the lives of the people are the things that are delivered. You become an oracle void of the capacity to minister on your own. The Bible says our sufficiency is not of ourselves. We didn't call ourselves he said, our sufficiencies of God who has made us qualified ministers of the new covenant not after the flesh but after the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit gives life thank you for the privilege without the presence of God you won't be here that presence this has been my message for years if you lose the presence of God the psalmist said cast me not away from your presence and came departed from the presence of God cast me not away from your presence let it rain let it rain yeah. open the floodgates of heaven now. let it rain and he showed me a river that flowed from the throne as clear as crystal. Oh, 
and it flowed to the tree of life and the leaves of that tree was for the healing of the nation let it rain from your throne let it rain open the floodgates of heaven let it rain like the dew of heaven let it rain until the spirit be poured upon us from on high and then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine and then the fruitful vine be counted for a forest let it rain open the floodgates of heaven Silence. Just play keyboards. Just play anything. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is healing in your name. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. Just be still in his presence. These are sounds in the spirit. My anana mosu na ni anana mosu di anana na. She na 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 mosu pari anana. And be not drunk with wine wherein in excess, but be ye filled with the spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart unto the Lord. She na ni anana mosu na ni anana mosu di. Just leave it alone. She na ni anana mosu na ni anana. She ne ne ni anana mosu kari anana. She Maria na mosu yaraya. And ye are come out to Mount Zion, the place of the firstborn, where there are innumerable companies of angels, the spirits of just men made perfect. She na ma kari anaba, where the blood of sprinkling speaks. She Maria na ma ni anana. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness, and the sons of Jacob shall possess their possessions. It shall come to pass in that day that the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted, and all the nations shall flow through. There is a kind of fire that does not destroy. There is a kind of fire that refines. There is a kind of fire. Ke pariana moso mariana mariana moso. Every spirit 
that is not of God along this circumference please ushers take note some people are going to be delivered right now from outside lift your hands let the power of God fall every demonic influence or possession of all sorts outside Shataka Parata Rakataya I detone principalities I detone powers and rulers I speak against spiritual wickedness in the heavens now inside this building I pray everyone under the influence of darkness bring that lady out everyone under the influence of darkness release them now chains be broken chains be broken upon Mount Zion let there be deliverance chains bring that lady out I proclaim emancipation now the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty Satan let God's people go let God's people go let God's people go yokes outside the fire of the Holy Ghost Shata ta 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 Maka pareka Rekete Makoporiata Eke pokoto Mabata likete Rekete ka Mapotokote Rekete ke pariata Meko pososo kota Rekete peleketa Rapariekata Outside The fire of the Holy Ghost Is falling Every walk of darkness For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest that He may destroy, annihilate, liquidate the works of darkness? Shut up, shut up, outside there is an angel of deliverance. Outside there is an angel of deliverance. Outside, shake it, take it, reke, take it, Rebo Shata Mariata Pa Rakata Peke Telekosia Bekaria Sekaria 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 Makata ba 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 ba. Shekere re 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 re. Shekere re 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 re. Mataka balada bakaria. Upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. I see a chain, and that chain is a snake. Come, bring this lady. So let hope rise. You will leave her right now. Come out of her. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Out in the name of Jesus. Go. That devil, you are going. Come out of her right now. Go in the name of Jesus. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out in the name of Jesus. Go. Go. This is Mount Zion. Where there is deliverance, she's free. You will not hide. Come out! Come out! Take her out. She's going to cough out something. Run with her. She will cough out something. Look at what I'm seeing. A snake is biting this lady. This is why she's holding this. I'm seeing a snake in the realm of the spirit. You are a wicked spirit. Your time is gone. You are living now. Out. Come out. Come out of her. With a loud shout, you will go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost is against you. 
You're going. Go. Go. Out right now. Go. Devil of darkness. I challenge you by the power that is in the name of Jesus. You cannot stand. She has come to a place of liberty. You are going now. Now. Out of her. Out of her. Highest praise to the king. Highest praise to the king. Highest praise to the king. Everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you. I prophesy, everything that was lost shall be returned unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be returned unto you. Everything that was lost shall be restored unto you. Everything that was stolen shall be now out out you cannot hide i see you in the spirit come out right now now foul devil of darkness come out of her for who shall decree a thing and it shall come to pass when the lord has not commanded it there is judgment upon you tonight and you will go out of her right now Let her go. Let her go now. Now. Let her go. Come out of her. Let her go. The name of Jesus. Lord forever he remains Lord in this place Lord let this be a place continually where your healing power will find the expression without restriction where your ability to deliver will find expression without restriction 
where your grace to change and transform men we will preach the truth we will declare your counsel in truth we refuse to follow the status quo of ministry and society we choose to be pleasers of the mighty God come Lay your hands on her shoulder. Just lay your hands on her shoulder. No, no, no. Listen. Just lay your hands on her shoulder. I've seen a serpent. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a snake. Just keep your hands on her shoulder. Our ushers are anointed people. You will go where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty hallelujah please be seated God bless you just leave them I welcome every one of you inside and outside those outside can you shout hallelujah God bless you. Thank you so much. Those inside, can you shout praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Romans 4. I apologize. We will suspend our family life series temporarily. We will resume next month. Hallelujah. We are supposed to be talking about family life and relationship. But there is an urgent message in my spirit.
number 17. If you're there, say amen. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before whom he believed, even God, who giveth life to the dead and calleth those things which are not as though they were. This is talking about Abraham now. Who is Victoria? Victoria. Victoria, come. Who against hope, believed in hope, the father of many nations. The lady from Katsina, is she here? Katsina. Who? Come.
I must establish what I'm trying to do tonight. I really wish that we have a lot of time. Someone outside will shout heavily under the anointing. Please, when, when that person shouts, let me have the person here. Just the power and the fire of God at the same time will come upon the person outside. When that happens, let me see the person. Let's continue. 19. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old. Neither the deadness of Sarah's womb. 20. Are you there? Let's read together. One to read. You can look up his projected. One to read. Through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Next verse. Stop. Just the first four words. One, two. One more time. One more time. One more time. The Holy Spirit began to speak to me. This is not a message to Koinonia. This is a message to the body of Christ. And I pray that it will go far. The same finger that has taken our messages beyond us. Let that invisible hand take this message. Beyond the borders of this nation. In the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost began to speak to me. How that... that many believers listen please are unable to walk in the reality of the power and authority of the word because of unbelief and many believers have not yet come to a point where you are convinced about the truthfulness and the reality of the word of God we sing songs that talk about the power of God we sing songs that talk about the grace of God we sing songs about the things that God has done and what he can do we make seeming confessions of faith but embedded in our heart is a stronghold of unbelief And the Holy Ghost began to communicate a lamentation in my spirit that the body of Christ is walking in great unbelief. Great unbelief. Our capacity to trust the word of God enough such that we can allow it to rule our lives. Such that we can stake our lives at the integrity of the word is what is wanting in the body of Christ. That's the person. Bring the person. There is a level of realness. Please look at me. There is a level of realness. It's not just one person. It was an instruction to one person. But the hunger of another person is going to make a person catch the fire. So it will be two people. There is a realness. There is an authenticity about the reality of the spirit. Listen, there is an authenticity about the reality of the kingdom life. That if you shatter the walls of unbelief, it will bring you into a solid experience where you are persuaded that the things that have been written are true. There is a conviction a solid grounded spiritual conviction that comes upon your heart you know that you know that you know you enter the realm I call the Sabbath of faith the Sabbath of faith the rest of faith you're not trying to doubt you're not trying to make yourself believe 
it has become your present day reality this is the experience that is lacking in the body of Christ let me tell you what we need in the body of Christ is not new messages there are explicit messages just switch on your TV there are all kinds of revelations that come but what we lack is the ability to stay come back God is not done with you look at me just look at me just look at me he's not done with you just look at my eyes the ability to be so convinced about the reality of the truth of God's word is one of the highest dimensions that a man can stand in the spirit he said Abraham and being fully persuaded being fully convinced there is a depth of conviction about spiritual realities even those that preach great messages that message has not changed them there is a conviction this is a pulpit there's no message that would change me from knowing that this is a pulpit there is a rest I believe I am persuaded there are impartations that are just going on because this is a strong message from the heart of the spirit to the body of Christ let me tell you something demons are not afraid of crowd that's the reason why through diabolic powers you can get crowd demons are not even afraid of powerful words and the seed is the word when it was falling on the soil Satan didn't mind because he knew some would be a waste do you know that Satan is not afraid of the word of God what Satan is afraid is your reception of the word of God such that it becomes living and active this is what makes him afraid for even the demons know that Jesus is Lord and they tremble but it does not change them are you listening to me oh Jesus is my healer Jesus is my provider Jesus is this and that we confess it we have Bible studies explaining certain things have been given authority over snakes and scorpions there is no conviction Adolf Hitler came out and he believed that the Jews should be annihilated based on whatever revelation he had a solid conviction and he lived his entire life till death attempting to carry out that agenda listen the world is ruled by men of conviction Satan has a solid conviction that one day he will dethrone God and that conviction keeps him alive day and night regardless of the number of miracles that happen in a crusade ground Satan has never gone back to give himself worry and ask the demons to retreat conviction if you will believe half of the revelations you know if you become convicted by their reality it will change you every time I have the opportunity to go and share the word of God people invite me and they say we are expectant that's the text they write to me and then I'm wondering you are expectant what are you waiting to see and they begin to invite their friends oh Joshua Selman is coming it's going to be a powerful meeting have you realized that the most powerful messages that have been preached have lacked the ability to produce the effect that those messages were supposed to carry we preach powerful messages solid messages many of you believe you are anointed you believe in the anointing but you will soon find out that you are just informed that you are anointed it has not yet become a conviction but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded who against all hope believed and this is the cry of the spirit 
there are many things God wants to release to people there are many dimensions that God wants us to walk listen I write to you oh excellent Theophilus of all the things that Jesus began to do and teach do and teach we do not have a performance that solidifies our convictions many of you are here and you are hearing this word you are seeing all the miracles and the signs and the wonders the laughter will come by the spirit I'm hearing it in the realm of the spirit the laughter will come by the spirit and this is a sign the laughter will come by the spirit This is not the laughter for there are many sounds there is a laughter it's purely by the Holy Ghost please just flow with me this is not a normal this is not your church when you come for koinonia just take away your intellect because it will insult it a lot there is a laughter I see it and read it I will understand and I will believe do you know I'm going to say something that will surprise you the Holy Ghost told me this and it rattled my theology he said there is only one reason why prayer and fasting was designed in the Bible. Prayer and fasting was designed to attack only one limitation, unbelief. That's all. I've read many scriptures that talk about many things that prayer and fasting does. But when you study in the spirit, you will find out that at the heart of everything is unbelief. They could not cast the one with the epileptic spirit. 
Jesus said it was because of unbelief. He said, however, this kind goeth not but by prayer and fasting. That means prayer and fasting opens up the reality of God to you. And when God is opened up to you, unbelief, there is a stronger conviction that what your optical eyes and your ears can hear. And based on that, unbelief melts away. must not have a vision to conquer unbelief you must not have a vision and a dream there is an activity of the spirit for it is God who is at work in us both to will and to do are you persuaded oh I'm above we can shout it in church this is just empty noise if it does not come from a depth of conviction how do I know we are not convicted because at every given time we throw away the things that are supposed to govern our life and we begin to run for something else as though the word were not true the Bible talks about men who through faith subdue kingdoms who shut the mouth of lions wrought righteousness women who received their death back to life and others who died without receiving the promise they died in faith these men were convicted i gave this example yesterday let me give it again sweetheart please stand up everybody look at this lady is this a lady or a guy answer me is this a lady or a guy if I look at you right now and I'm a medical doctor and I convince you, will I be able to convince you? Why? You are persuaded. Are you trying to claim being a lady? Are you trying to work it out? You have entered the Sabbath of faith. It has become your present day reality. You live by that truth. I know I'm called of God. There is no message that will make me doubt it once. Are you listening to me? This is the dimension that the Holy Ghost has been shouting in my spirit that the body of Christ should enter. Because there is a religious spirit. I saw this in a vision that the Lord showed me. I didn't even know there was a spirit called a religious spirit that has been fired and sent to the body of Christ. Let me tell you what that religious spirit will do. Men who are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth ever learning hallelujah I was going to minister to one lady God bless you my dear something happened to me they brought a lady to me to pray for her for deliverance and while I began to minister to this lady the spirits in her began to manifest and they were shouting. They wouldn't stop. Just shouting and talking. And I just decided to keep quiet and listen. The devil is a liar. But under the presence of God, everything tells the truth, including him. Everything. For light cannot stand in darkness. And this lady began to shout and this is what she said. Of course, not her, but this wicked spirit. That there is a strategy from the kingdom of darkness that is being released against the body of Christ. And then the lady just shouted, or the demons now, they just shouted. They said, switch to, is it code 507 something? And then the next thing she just turned, that this thing is a code that had been existing right from the days of Pharaoh. And he said, man of God, you are hearing me. Let me tell you. He said, remember when the children of Israel, this is a lady who normally does not even know half of that scripture. This is the spirit speaking, attempting to challenge me. He said, do you know that in the days of Pharaoh, when he told the nation of Israel, when the nation of Israel came and Moses came as a deliverer, he said the moment the word of deliverance and healing came what happened pharaoh said is it not because they are idle 
you see that is it not because they are idle that they can have the time to do this what is the strategy he said occupy them are you getting the strategy now or give them more work let them be more involved that they will be carried away this was the same spirit that was at work in Martha Jesus came there was Mary and Martha Martha was occupied and Jesus looks at Martha and he said Martha Martha you are upset you are worried you are occupied this is the spirit it's a religious spirit it has been released upon the body of Christ ministries are just adding programs they think it's advancement this is a strategy from the kingdom of darkness occupying more people so that they are carried away more departments are being formed more things activities this is the same spirit that distracts men Martha Martha you are worried and upset about many things he said one thing is needful in other words many activities and ceremonies that we do in the body of Christ are totally useless because they are not part of the things that God designed to bring man into his prophetic agenda are you listening to what I'm saying so the consolation is crowd the man of God is convinced that there is a crowd inside and outside thank God for that but let me tell you the truth there is a degree of conviction we do not have. Every time I say this, people think I'm being critical or judgmental. Many of the people that come here and suddenly right where they are, the demons begin to leave. Many of these people go to churches on Sunday. What is happening to our churches? I say this with a sincere heart of love. There are many activities hold the mic under the influence of demons and sing and the pastor who is teaching about the gift of the spirit cannot even discern yet he calls himself a prophet something is wrong persuasion I'm convinced I'm convinced that no man can take my life I'm convinced about this not a man born by a woman hallelujah because the Bible says I set before you life see every time you are listening to God's Word whether it's through reading it listen please or through listening to a message you were there the day I was praying for the lady what happened when a koinonia message was played I don't mean to brag these messages listen I saw something that surprised me I will be the last man of God to try to exalt myself for any message above another but they were worship songs that were playing and this this lady was just lying down on that demon spirit nothing happened quietly just lying down the moment we switched just one the worship suddenly what happened under the influence of the demons she ran and went and switched off my television this is some and then we were sitting the next thing we saw this lady carry my table knife if not because Kenny held her they would have said I killed somebody there what did these demons hear many of you wonder why the messages are spreading it's not a man there is there is grace there is not what I'm saying is not spectacular this is not the first time you are hearing this The words that I speak unto you they are coming from a depth of persuasion I'm not speaking theory that which I have seen that which I have heard that which our hands have handled look at me don't go God isn't done with you yet please just let them because there is a river flowing in this place someone wrote that song let the river flow there are many worship teams in many churches the church is a desert and they are singing let the river flow listen God is not happy with this let me tell you this is a very serious message a hypocrite is one who claims he understands the reality of a thing 
but is not walking in the experiential reality of that truth. You would go to just one meeting and sit down and see what is being done. They will hear just one scripture and that scripture will become life in them and they will begin to walk in this reality. But right now we have a lot of things. People who believe God. There are people, I preached this somewhere. On Sunday, Lord, we love you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, you are faithful. There are challenges in their lives. By Monday, somebody calls them and says, there's one place. The Holy Spirit is already telling you that this is not a godly place. But what happens? It tests your persuasion. You say, well, I will go so long as the man is called a pastor. But the Holy Ghost has told you. But now you choose to look at the things that are going on in your life. Can I tell you something? If the body of Christ does not strengthen her persuasion about kingdom things, we will not last. Are you listening to me? Because Satan has mastered the art of using your senses to dwindle your convictions. But Abraham, when he was a hundred years old, considered not the deadness of his body both of them had passed any stage where reproduction and childbirth is possible Bishop Oyedego I listened to a message by him recently and the Lord told him that between now and the 28th of July every single living faith church will double their congregation Now you may criticize him and say what in the world is this that means there will be massive salvations convinced do you know that your coming for koinonia tells that you are convinced that service will hold is that correct imagine if you remained at home and you told somebody just come and find out uh -uh. you were convinced when you were climbing the bike the bike was going with you you didn't doubt for once what if the service does not hold this is called conviction we are not persuaded about spiritual things when you lay hands on the sick what is happening to your spirit do you truly realize that something is leaving you to step into the person when you are speaking to someone under the influence of devils what is happening to you the Bible says and the Lord walking with them the Lord is walking with Joshua Selman I'm convinced can I tell you something it is your degree of persuasion and conviction that will open doors for you in the spirit is Ada here Aaron when he comes let me know praise the Lord say after me I'm persuaded Everybody say it. I'm persuaded. My brother, the guy in yellow, please come. My sister, you with purple, come. Please come quickly. I want, we're going to pray shortly. I want to communicate the thing that is burning in my spirit. Come, come, come. Have you given your heart to Jesus Christ? Do you read your Bible? regularly do you believe what is written there everything is it true has it been working in your life tell the truth everything is not true i'm not embarrassing you but i'm telling you that if you will take this word and believe it my dear how are you do you read your bible very well do you believe it have you seen the things that are written there happen in your life? Not yet. It will become true in your life. And this is my prayer. My brother, may you experience, listen, look at me. If you are experiencing what the Bible says, are you listening to me? In reality, you will not be able to move from here to your house. People will run over and hold your clothes and try to tear it.
12 o'clock. If you come, you will stand in second equa. Is that true? Is that true? You do not know the power of activating the word of God to work in your life. There is so much. God bless you. Bless you, my brother. Look at me. Are you embarrassed? I pray that God will cause you to walk in this truth. You know why I called you? Because you will walk in it. God will use you. And even you. That's why I called you to use you. God bless you. Hallelujah. That's why I sang that song. Jesus, Son of God, I believe ask you a question. Look at me. If someone were to suddenly carry a gun right now and appear in front of us, a real gun, not a toy, hallelujah, and wants to spray that gun on everybody, beginning from me, or let's assume there's somebody in this crowd now that was sent to come and shoot me or kill me at that point are you still persuaded that I shall not die but live to declare the words of the Lord many of you are just saying yes I've seen armed robbers on the road I tell you the truth no man born of a woman no man born of a woman would be able to take my life I do not live by the sword I will not die by the sword for my Bible to see the part of the word that you believe is the part that will work for you are you listening to me the part of the that section of the Bible that you take as true is the one that will work for you I'm speaking by revelation there is a spirit that stands behind a man that holds a gun. No mortal man has the audacity to do that. There is a spirit. And if you look at the man, you will be afraid. But that spirit can bow to the name of the Lord. If somebody looks at you and says, Sam, I am going to a herbalist for you. Many of us panic and say, hey, please, Bishop, stand. Somebody said uh, yesterday, conviction, conviction, conviction. Whoever predicts your downfall is wasting his time. For your hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Listen to what you are saying. You've not even listened to it. It's built on what? And what? What does that mean to you? On Christ the solid rock I stand. See, this is the reason why I love Christ Embassy a lot. For this singular reason. There are men who are persuaded. Are you listening to me? When I'm talking good about a ministry, I mention their name. When I'm flogging out issues, I don't mention names. When you see the way an average Christ embassy person prays, you know they believe in what they are doing. Many of you are filled with the Holy Ghost. You pray in tongues, but you are not yet convinced of its ability to change you. So your praying in tongues is of none effect. You waste six hours, ten hours, yet you see churches that do night vigil every week, but they are not changed. But that's not true. Because scripture cannot people say I've been believing God for the past 10 years I've been believing God when are you going to rest in that reality I have been believing God and God didn't do anything therefore I will change my mind you never believed in the first place you never believed are you listening to me you never believed because those who are, belie who are believers can die without receiving the promise and not change their convictions to death 
Bin Laden did not say anything else. Even when they had captured him, he would have quietly said, truly from today. Let me tell you that all this Bin Laden is a good one. This is a new person. He rather die than dwindle his conviction. Many of us are not convinced. There is no demon. There is no spirit that will stop the advancement of ENI. If you ever saw a spirit in a vision, it will stop from that vision. It will never happen in this realm. I assure you, there is no spirit. This is not because we are bragging. The hands that lifted us will uphold us till the end. We will not be afraid. For the Lord is our light and the light of our life and we will not be afraid. This is what I believe in myself. That the hands that lifted me will uphold me till the end. Let me tell you, if you are waiting one day to hear that ah, Joshua Selman has fallen, that's only a dream. If you ever see it, it's a Nigerian film. Because the Bible says, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. There is, see, this is not boasting. It's persuasion. Adeboe went somewhere and there was a plot by a woman. They had arranged a woman who would come and jump on him naked so that they would snap it and put it on paper. How many of you know that if you throw a great man down, you who threw that man would take his position. He will suddenly become famous while the man goes down and while he was going the Holy Ghost spoke to him listen the Holy Ghost spoke to him he said carry your wife <laughs> he said carry your wife and you know how he talks he said he told his wife let's go please and when he went to the hotel room he stayed there and they were ready the camera person and this when they knocked the door he wanted to go the hand that lifted him will keep him till the end he was about to go but the holy ghost constrained him and he told his wife to go and open the door the moment she opened the door there was this lady only to discover that is a woman how will you pose that that one thing would have wrecked redeemed and wrecked the whole world to its foundation apostle johnson suleiman was speaking he said he was in his hotel room when a lady knocked his door. He said, you have a parcel from the receptionist. Immediately he opened the door. That's how she stripped herself. He said he looked at her. And in his mind he was saying, is this how I will end? Is this how everybody who has looked upon me? But there is a hand that lifted him. It will uphold him till the end. Are you persuaded that God can keep you? I've shared with you my story. I was in worry. When a lady came and knocked my door. Ah! I opened this door. This lady was practically naked. There was nothing left there. When I saw this lady, I thought about you. I thought about God. I thought about my parents. I thought about my destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city up above. He leads me and guides me to the place of destiny. He leads me to the city up above. He leads me. And many of you listen when you get convinced satan will sit down and plot something against you and while they are plotting it god is using them to construct a ladder this is how you walk upon them to a new level and they will say it was not part of the plan for if they had known this they would not have crucified if satan had known that what he was doing was sowing a seed he will move everybody to stop jesus from dying you are not persuaded. That's why what you are going through is killing you. You are already offended. 
count it all joy my brothers when you face diverse temptation knowing this that the trying of your faith produces patience and let patience have its full cause men of dexterity and stature this is what we lack in the body of Christ men who fall like a leaf men without conviction a husband does not come you're already panicking he said there's a service somewhere he said please can you take me there Oh God, send a prophet. This husband must come. I give God three months. There is no rest. You have not entered the Sabbath of faith. When you enter that point, you understand. I believe. I'm a believer. I'm telling you. When I get up in the morning, I thank God. I don't know what happened through the night, but I know I thank God. Only God knows the unseen battles, day and night. Only God knows the meetings that go in hell every time to stop this meeting every Friday. But you are still living as if Satan does not exist. This is called dominion. Many of you are afraid. Every time God anoints you, you are afraid. You are afraid of ladies. You are afraid of scandal. Every little thing you want to explain yourself to everybody. Do you not know that there is a hand that took you? A bike man I took a bike today and I was trying to I gave the man 1,000 naira and he could not give me change because he did he, well he had change but it was all his money 20 20 naira 50 50 naira I told him I said sir how can, I told him take this 1,000 when you get change bring it back he looked at me and I said all this money if you give me where will you have change he said the God that gave me this one will give me again ha ah! I said just shame on you shame on you you are coming to preach this night you should have known that you should have collected that money and blessed him and say it is within my power to call forth greatness to you and melchizedek blessed abraham and said blessed be abraham there are many men of god that declare over people but what they are doing is just a religious benediction if you truly are convinced do you know that if somebody just shakes you something will leave you into that person i'm not talking about falling down someone will shake you and just find out that doors he did not bargain for is opening up this is what i want you to become men and women of conviction many of you fall like a leaf this is why somebody will come to sleep with you you know that the bible says flee fornication say it after me one more time louder Say it until something in your spirit happens. You enter the car, no conviction. You cross flyover, no conviction. Until you find yourself in no hotel in Abuja. And the man says, This is the place. Say, Really? No conviction. No conviction. Or when it's time for exam. You look at question one, Greek. Question two, Aramaic. Question three, Hebrews. Your neighbor says, all right. Let me just help you. Even God understands. At that point, the Holy Spirit brings all the scriptures you know should encourage you. But at that point, you think of my father. What will I tell my parents? How can I spill over? Will they know? Are you not merciful? What is your degree of conviction? There are some of us when you carry your tithe, it's how you are frowning, you are just coming. You are sure to myself, all these people, this coin on your people. Let me just do it. At least my roommates knows that they bless me. Stretch forth your tithe, Father. Thank you. He hasn't take your thing. No. You are not convinced. Whenever your state comes to give you scholarship and they go before um, guidance and counseling you go there rejoicing even if you have not eaten the substance of things you hope for the evidence the moment you see the officer you start laughing that today and today I will eat you, in your mind you have finished cooking this is conviction no amount of rain will stop you from leaving that place you are not going you are persuaded but why is that not happening to your Christian experience Many of you say, oh, I'm one with the Holy Spirit. 
but is his reality at work in your life do you hear him does he lead you because there are many of us that have made too many stupid decisions in our lives that convinces us that the holy ghost is not at work i know we are all growing but where it becomes perpetual and continuous uh -uh, something is wrong are you listening to me I believe in God and I am convinced that the issue of my health has been settled the issue of my finances has been settled the issue of my protection has been settled I am a success I'm not a failure I'm the head I'm not the tail Koinonia, look at me. I beg you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, believe this. Believe this. We are wasting our time here if you don't believe this. Are you listening to me? Believe it. This word will not fail you. This is the word that brought Koinonia to being. You were not here. The word took you from where you were and brought you here. This is the word. I would die believing this word. I'm persuaded if nothing else ever happens in my life I believe it there is no meeting that I will go to that God will not do great things I'm not trying to believe it it has become my reality because I have become a portal for God to find expression this is my conviction this is my conviction my hands are blessed hands I believe it if I shake you, you are blessed. I'm telling you, if I call you blessed, you are blessed. My word, you see, I give voice to the word of God in the spirit. I can call things that be not. I can program things that are in time and eternity to come and synchronize. I can forward things in your life by the power of the word of God. And Elijah said, king let Naaman come and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel Elijah was so convinced he was laughing at the prophets of Baal if it was me while Baal was busy struggling I'll be praying oh God please don't disgrace me I will be in it in a moment of worship Elijah was laughing when you pray you don't pray for the food to enter your mouth you are convinced and you are persuaded even when you are lying you believe that your voice box will still speak out that lie you are persuaded he is able more than able to accomplish what concerns me today Lord, you are able, you're more than able, yes, I know you are, to handle everything that comes my way, you are able, more than able, sing it from your heart. make me what he wants to make me listen to what you are saying you're able to make me what you want me to be you're able to take me where you want me to go you're able to show me what you want me to see you're able to teach me what you want me to know listen be persuaded your parents tell you there is no school fees you say i know my bible says the part of a just is as a shining light you may be a madman give voice to the word of god activate it in your spirit believe it don't
don't be weak Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief he counted him faithful do you count God faithful every little thing believers shaking out every little challenge they run if you if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small Job said though he slay me I am convinced yet will I praise him he said I know my redeemer leave it are you convinced you trusted God for four point something you check the board you saw 1.5 with four carryovers and so what now and so what now now you turn aside and say God look at what you have done are you really strong that way you are not convinced we have many Christians who are not convinced I'm telling you your conviction is small and if you do not strengthen your conviction it will dwindle if I have no food to eat right now let me tell you what I will do I will hold my stomach and I will walk up and down my room and I'll say Lord I bless you I know my Redeemer lives that's the song I will sing I know listen that's what you must see if I can get you to a point where you are persuaded I tell you every message you hear will become living and active there's too much destruction in our churches many messages many series no conviction and so we cannot walk in the reality of it T.L. Osborne great man see Paul Peter said such as I have at what point did he know he had something because when Jesus called him he didn't have anything that means there was a day there was a time when he knew he had something everybody say I have something I have an anointing please say it I have an anointing I am not weak I am not small I'm strong in Christ I'm the head and not the tail I'm favored the favor of God compasses me as a shield I may not see it right now but I'm convinced about its reality and the Word of God will bring it to pass say one more time I may not see it right now I may not hear the news right now but I'm convinced the job is coming the child is coming the breakthrough is coming the prosperity is coming this is faith this is faith this is faith there is nobody that tells us every Friday that there will be so 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 and so number of people but the protocol know that the prayer band people are praying and they are setting the atmosphere and based on that conviction they go and get chairs and bring and God is alive and active watching over his word to perform it what have you believed God for many of us you've never really believed God for anything aside from your salvation do you now see that it's possible to come out for an altar call and not be saved oh yes there are many people I tell you the truth many pastors who criticize me for this that you came out and recited altar call prayer does not mean you are you are you are, you are saved the Bible says whosoever shall believe shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved not whosoever shall speak English you now see why on the day of Pentecost while Peter yet speak he spoke to men who truly opened their hearts and the Holy Ghost did not ask for the permission of any man this is the reason why sometimes we are worshiping and God begins to do great things such as this there is an atmosphere of faith many of you have surrounded yourself with nonsense that chokes away faith themes that dwindle your convictions 
ungodly music that dwindles your conviction say it does not matter Jordan is here his bookstore is here why don't you go and buy books why don't you sit down with the word of God I made up my mind that my entire environment will speak faith you don't come to my my place and talk unbelief I will send you out I tell you the truth I will send you out politely but sternly you will go out many of you all you speak are languages of faithlessness and unbelief every time you enter someone's room the moment you come out you leave the person worse than you met the person ah now I have no food in this room going on here again all of you koinonia people jumping jumping me and you who is better you see it you see it anybody that comes and speaks like that don't be angry don't criticize them you see that but i tell you be far from those kinds of people they will dampen your faith the moment god tells you pastor williams you are rising from glory to glory you are moving from grace to grace if i have a dream that does not look like what god has told me I will change it did you hear me many of you think if you have a dream I saw it hey, hey, hey it will come to pass Job said has thou commanded thy morning a man can command his morning we're going to rise up and we're going to pray we're going to make declarations of faith and say Lord I repent of unbelief I want to enter the Sabbath of faith where I'm convinced and nothing will move me. Rise up on your feet, everybody. When a season where God is bringing miracles, when a season where God is doing mighty things, hear me inside and outside. Believe this message because it comes from the Lord. Are you ready to pray now? Prayer point number one. You're going to say, Lord, every spirit of unbelief in my life let it live right now that spirit that makes me question the truth of God's word every spirit come on challenge it inside and outside every spirit of unbelief don't look at your neighbor Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Your life can be better than it is if unbelief goes. Every spirit of doubt and unbelief. But I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. Regete keshekete. Regete baka prakata. La pako proko tope regete ke peko sobata bala bala ba Pray I curse every spirit of unbelief I curse every spirit Shake it, take it, balaraba. Rakata broko tope. Eko brosko sope take it. Sepre ke take it, balere bokos. Make sure you're praying. Unbelief concerning my health, concerning my finances. Pray. Concerning your academics, concerning your marriage, I cause unbelief. I cause unbelief. My God is able. My God is able. My God is able. Listen. The fact that your situation has not changed does not mean it cannot change. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? The fact that your situation has not changed. Listen. Make up your mind that if my situation does not change, I will not be the one to change. Are you hearing me? One of two of you will give up one day. Oh, I've been speaking for one year. I've been speaking for two years. Abraham believed God for 25 years. If it is genuine faith, there will be a performance. You are going to pray right now. You know the areas of your life where you are trusting God for breakthroughs. Please, I don't want you to keep quiet. In the next one minute, pray radically like a, like a priest. Lift your voice. Challenge your finances. Challenge your spiritual life. Challenge your ministry. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Grace. Grace. Increase. Multiplication. Academic excellence. Academic excellence. Divine health. Longevity. God is faithful. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Rakata preke te bele de bosh. Rotos ko preke. Gapo ka priata la ba. Seketa. Le kontos ko so ko di araba. Rabari eke te. Reke to krasta. Outside. Make sure you are praying. Outside. Make sure you are praying. Pray like a priest. Pray like a priest. Prayer works. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much. The effectual, fervent prayer. Shake it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, command breakthroughs. Come on, pray for your life. It will change. Don't keep quiet. It will change. It will change. Forget about what you are seeing now. It can change. For the things that are seen are temporal. The things that are seen are temporal. The report you had is temporal. Shakatabalaraba. I change reports. 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 I believe the report of the Lord. I change reports. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Jesus is the word. But you are the one that gives voice to that word. You activate it. Making it potent. John said, I am the voice of one crying. I give voice. I give voice. When you begin to speak the word, you activate it to produce. It becomes living and active. Right now you are going to pray. You are going to prophesy what you know the word of God has said over every area of your life. Don't keep quiet. Even if it's only one scripture you know. Are you ready? Are you ready to pray? Lift your voice and prophesy. My path is as a shining light. Favor. Everywhere I go. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my inheritance. The Lord is my portion. Oh, hallelujah. Favor follows me. Everywhere I go, I break forth from the left to the right. In the name of Jesus. Prophesy favor. Prophesy blessings. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above. I'm not beneath. 
in the name of Jesus my part is as a shining light my hands are blessed I have the spirit of excellence pray 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 things are changing your life is changing your life is changing you have authority you have power is resident within your spirit power to change power to adjust you may be small but you are powerful greater is he that is in your spirit greater is he that is in you that he that is in the world we having the spirit of faith as it is written i believe and therefore i speak i speak long life I speak greatness everywhere I go men follow me with favor doors are opening unto me in the name of Jesus the anointing upon my life is increasing from glory to glory grace to grace you enlarge my coast like Jabez and move from glory to glory Koinonia is rising ever increasing rising new levels of power new levels of grace we are not small i refuse poverty shake it kabbalah pray the spirit of holiness is at work in my life the spirit of purity is at work in my life in the name of jesus i am pure i am holy blameless before the throne commended by the blood of the lamb unto him who is able to keep me from falling and present me faultless before his glorious majesty declare declare that he may be justified declare i walk in blessings i'm favored i'm above only i give life to the word of god the secrets of god are with me because i fear him he gives me the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places the lord teaches my hands to profit i'm above principalities powers thrones dominions and every name that is named pray i cause sickness from my body command every disease to go command every infirmity to leave command every sickness resist the devil make sure you are praying command every sickness in your body to check out headaches go fever go Go, go, no inhabitant in Zion shall say, I am sick, I walk in health, I walk in health. If that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body, I refuse fatigue, command my grain to go. command every spirit every demon every enchantment every covenant every curse every act of divination take it away from your life i set myself free come on pray i set myself free every curse every activity of witchcraft and manipulation i curse it it cannot stand I'm anointed I'm anointed I'm blessed I'm distinguished I'm anointed I'm blessed I'm full of grace full of power 
full of wisdom my prayer life is growing my world life is growing I'm becoming a champion in the spirit I become a champion a man of power power in the heavens power in the earth the ability to change territories miracles are wrought through my hands koinonia becomes a place of signs wonders miracles deliverance revelation prosperity excellence character Hallelujah. This is how kings reign. Give voice to the word of God from a depth of conviction and it will change your life. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed. Hallelujah. Now listen to me everyone inside and outside hear me if you're here and you've never made a decision for jesus christ you've never been born again you've not given your heart to the lord or you once committed yourself to the ways of god but for whatever reason you found yourself distracted and you've derailed from the path of god no one condemns you this is a place of liberty this is where you find rest the Bible says, come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You can't find it by yourself and nothing else can give you that rest. Right now in the name of Jesus, wherever you are, inside or outside, as the power of God convicts you, I'd like you to leave where you are and come out right now. Come to Jesus. Everyone, please clap for them as they come. Inside or outside, you've never given your heart to the Lord or you found yourself derailing please don't sit back thank you my sister god bless you god bless you my brother the lord is seeing you inside and outside please make sure you come don't sit back this is the miracle don't sit back don't sit back bring them here god bless you clap for them they are coming from outside no matter how far you have gone let me tell you god can give you a new beginning men may condemn you but I want you to know you can start and run like Elijah. Keep clapping. They are coming. Thank you, Jesus. Young and old, don't be ashamed. Come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He will set you on fire like the foxes that Samson set on fire. And you will go and do exploits. Hallelujah of you in front pray after me lift your right hand very high say after me lord jesus please keep coming my brothers say after me lord jesus lift your right hand if you are here for the salvation prayer as high as you can say after me lord jesus i believe you died for me i believe you shed your blood for me i accept that i'm a sinner unable to help myself but I believe your word forgive my sins cleanse me with your precious blood I receive eternal life into my spirit I denounce sin and Satan and I declare that from today forward ever and backward never Satan take your hands off my life I belong to a new family right now I declare that I'm justified, cleansed by the blood of Jesus. I have a new life. My past is gone. It's over forever in the name of Jesus. Now keep those hands lifted. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my brothers and sisters. The Bible says for everyone that comes, you will in no wise cast away. I pray in the name of Jesus that this will be the beginning of a new life. Let this salvation be genuine. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, from today I declare that every habit, every challenge, every weight and power of sin over your life is broken in the name of Jesus Christ. From today you step into a new life. 
you begin to experience glorious things in the name of Jesus every voice that speaks against you in the name of Jesus I declare sister you are healed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ thank you Jesus now I want you to follow the ushers they will have your details and we are going to follow you up God bless you please celebrate these great people thank you so much God bless you hallelujah now very quickly inside and outside if tonight is your first time of worshiping with us in koinonia please i'd like you to leave your seat and come out victoriously we have a prayer a prophecy and a blessing for you thank you for watching our entire video today if you feel you can bless someone please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media